Well, Nafisa, let me just put it into some historical context. Today was the 70th anniversary of the founding of the alliance, and it was signed here in Washington, D.C., um, and I'm at the State Department where the summit was held. And the original mandate for the alliance was to stem the growth of of the Soviet Union and communism. Now that mandate has been extended. Turkey has been an early ally um, and as part of the alliance since the 1950s. Uh, but the part of the agenda here still is to stop Russian aggression. And the NATO Secretary General made that clear during many of his remarks, including what other things, other things he was talking about, like international terrorism or increasing defense uh, spending by other countries. But what kept coming back, what the press kept coming back to, and they came back to I mean, this question is, is Turkey's purchase of the S-400 missile defense system a red line for NATO? And he said, no, it's not a red line for NATO, but clearly the U.S. has made sure to make to make it clear that it's a red line for them and that they would know they would kick Turkey out of the F-35 program which they're in and helping work on technology and and actually have pilots Turkish pilots working in the F-35s here in the states in Arizona but they kind of tried to end the 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 meeting today the foreign minister said that to Turkish press and other press on the sidelines but at the end of the summit today, the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo here, the U.S. Secretary of State, said that he sees things moving forward with Turkey. He tried to end on a positive note, despite what the Vice President said, as opposed to throwing a gauntlet down. And then the Far Foreign Minister, Mehmet Ch Çavuşoğlu, also said that he had the discussion, he brought up the idea that they have these joint technical meetings. So behind closed doors, it really appears that Pompeo and Çavuşoğlu have decided to continue a dialogue going forward, despite what leadership on both sides say to the public. Now, Courtney, talk us through um, wider implications for the NATO alliance and Turkey's membership uh, after all this. Look, the, Turkey's membership is, membership is not in jeopardy, whether it be because they've purchased the S-400, which they purchased in 2017. And then this U.S. administration, Trump administration, has offered to sell the Patriot missile system to Turkey, which they had originally wanted to purchase under the Obama administration, but were unable to and went to Russia. So. Uh, Mevlet Çavuşoğlu, the foreign minister, said, look, you can't make us decide, choose U.S. or Russia, choose Russia over the U.S. We have to work with both. Uh, you know, we have NATO, uh, we have the NATO alliance and with and the relationship with the U.S., but he said we also have Russia as a neighbor, and Russia is also in Syria. The, the, ge you know, the geography has changed, the conflicts have changed, and Turkey's point is they need a defense system, but the U.S.'s point is we can't have you using a Russian defense system that they could somehow hack into technology that's being developed by the U.S., like the F-35s. They don't trust Russia. This is after the Mueller report came out very clearly, according to the Attorney General's letter, that Russia interfered in the elections by hacking here. So it's once back again, it's like Cold War redux. The NATO summit, it's still trying to stem the tide of Russian aggression, and that's why this, the sale, the purchase by Turkey of this missile defense system from Russia, not just from anywhere, was such a hot topic.